How is up, y'all? It's Poppin' was cracking. It's D-Boss here. It's Jamari that is titled, Ellen's Comeback is Horrible. She has a comeback after she got canceled? Okay, now let's see her trying to come back and see what happened. Let's watch. So it has been a very long time since we last talked about Ellen DeGenerate, and that's mainly because she had gone into hiding ever since she was basically the only person to be legitimately canceled. Mm. Well, her and that one Eagles fan, that is. For those of you who don't remember, or weren't around back then to remember, for years Ellen was one of the most successful people in show business, dancing around Target, embarrassing unassuming stay-at-home mothers for her own sick amusement, taking selfies with creepers, and who could forget cuddling with P. Diddy. And despite all of this foolishness, universally she did maintain a pretty good reputation, even receiving some sort of humanitarian award from Obama back when he was still president. On top of that, her show was insanely popular for over a decade, and by the end of it, she was making well over $50 million a year, with tons of sponsorships and other opportunities rolling in every single day. And keep in mind, guys, this is back when you could find an oddly shaped Cheeto and end up on that godforsaken couch. And people ate this shit up for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and she was essentially being forced down our throats for a very long time. But for Ellen, it wasn't always like this. She, she had to grind it. for years to become a successful stand-up comedian back in the late 80s and early 90s. And after being voted the funniest comedian in the country and making a few but appearances who? on late night television, she would come out with her own self-titled sitcom that did very well. That Why wasn't her until toes she revealed like her him? sexuality both on the show and in real life. Well, that was... Am I tripping? Night television, she would look at these toes. Look at this one. Why look like that? Come out with her own self-titled sitcom that did very well. That was until she revealed her sexuality both on the show and in real life. This isn't. I'm gay. Isn't that a parent? Did you know she was gay? and the ratings plummeted because the world was not socially ready for that during the 90s. Mm -hmm. And then everybody got so sick of it. Oh, so it got to the point where even Elton John, who I'd never met in my life, Elton John said, we know you're gay, shut up and be funny. Mm -hmm. It's funny because I all along that was my biggest fear is that it was going to get canceled. I never yeah, wanted to be an activist. I just wanted to entertain people. I just wanted to make people feel good. So then she was outcasted but slowly made her way back. And of course she gets the speaking role for Dory in Finding Nemo, which was a massive oh, hit. She was Keep swimming, Dory. swimming, swimming. And this leads to her getting her foot back into the entertainment door and eventually becoming a titan in daytime television. <laughs> and so for years her infamous catchphrase on her show that represented her entire brand was be kind to one another, as people even referred to Ellen as the Queen of the Nice, irony. which of course turned out to be horrifically ironic in the end. In 2020, hundreds of stories went viral on social media describing Ellen as a bully both at work and in her personal life. Talks of a toxic work environment were at the forefront of these complaints, including racist undertones, intimidation, and even sexual misconduct from high-level employees were all alleged against Ellen and this workplace that she had created. Mm -hmm. High-level employees, from producers to talent on the show, have all corroborated these allegations of a toxic work environment. Were you surprised by the sheer number of responses that you got? I actually was surprised by that, and especially the variety of different kinds of stories that <laughs> perpetuated all those rumors and kind of hearsay about like, oh, Ellen is not quite as nice as she seems as she would appear. Moscat won two daytime Emmys with the show. She was let go in 2004. As a host, she's amazing as a host, but as a boss and someone who's behind the scenes running the show, she's a different person. She's not the person people see mm -hmm. in front of the camera. It's this really environment, this toxic that. culture that she created in the office has been going on for 16 years. While I am grateful for the opportunity it afforded me, I did experience and feel the toxicity of the environment, he writes on Instagram. Allegedly, Ellen was sending people <laughs> home if she me. didn't like how you smelled. People were not allowed to eat certain types of food while on set. There were stories of employees being terminated suddenly and without reason. Many employees were allegedly trained to not even make eye contact or expect to be acknowledged by Ellen. A former Ellen staffer writes, I saw Ellen in the hallways every day and would say hello, and she never once said hello back. She wouldn't smile. She wouldn't even acknowledge me at all for two seasons. And it sounds like she would go out of her way to publicly embarrass employees on a consistent basis. Basically, it seems like Ellen is one of those people who thinks she is better than others. 
and she wants to let them oh know God. it by acting like they are the dirt story. underneath her shoe if she deems you or your job is unimportant. Understand, guys, that these stories were not only coming from the workplace, but also from people who were dealing with Ellen in her everyday life. Like this bodyguard who frequently works with celebrities, who said that Ellen was the first and only who he had ever worked for to not even acknowledge his presence. And this waitress who claims that Ellen went out of her way to email her boss to try and get her fired over chipped nail polish. She emailed the owner of the restaurant and complained about your chipped nail polish. What? And I was like, what? Not only that, but also during her show, her audience members who got to participate in her games and whatnot also had stories of her being an elitist douchebag. You just expect a lot when you go to meet like your idol, and then when you get disappointed, it's like such a letdown. And they tell you, Don't you know, you can't her. be smarter, funnier than Ellen. Oh. She's the comedian and the star, not you. Would only speak to the audience when the cameras were rolling. As soon as they turned the cameras off, she would not even acknowledge the audience. She would just sit on the couch, basically. And even when she went over to Australia to do some shows over there, this is what a radio show host who was invited on had to say about his experience and how Ellen treated her staff. Deuce has called us aside and said, now, uh, Neil, no one wants to talk to Ellen. So you don't talk to her, you don't approach her, you don't look at her. The people who That's worked cool. with her walked on eggshells the whole time and the whole thing was totally bizarre. Like. We're there to do an interview with her to promote what You're she's doing, look at her. but you can't look at her like someone get real. And obviously with her having this long-standing reputation as this person who promoted nothing but positivity, people were shocked and outraged at this walking contradiction that Ellen had become. And at the time when she tried and failed to make a comeback, I mean, I she also look. gave this half-assed <laughs> apology letter yeah, where she tried sure. to dump the blame on everyone else. I'm just so sorry that it's come to this. I really don't know what to say other than this has gone on way, 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 way too long. People have gotten away with murder. Basically said she had no idea that this is what life was like on set. If given just the nature of the show is that her employees should love coming to work, no question. DeGeneres is saying she wasn't perfect and realized that some leaders were not as sensitive to human beings as they should have been adding that reading disturbing allegations about the atmosphere on the show was heartbreaking. So when Ellen says she's not aware of this uh, environment, you don't think that rings true? It's a lie. And this would become a running theme for Ellen not to take any true accountability for her downfalls. I and then she also addressed the situation poorly on her show, basically saying that if these things were going on that she had no idea about it, while those making the accusations this made it sound right. like she was the ringleader. How was everybody's summer, good? Yeah? Mine was great. <laughs> Being known as the be kind lady is a tricky position to be in. So let me give you some I advice. Out there. Funny, Anybody's thinking of changing like... their title or giving yourself a nickname, Everything do not about go with the be kind funny. lady. And this shit somehow gets even more dystopian when you realize that this was the audience she was standing in front of. The show after that ran for two years and it was essentially a corpse of itself. Forced laughter, forced kindness, and it was clear that Ellen was feeling the pressure while crying about the situation she put herself in. Ratings were at an all-time low, and old clips began to resurface that further shines a light on the downright douchebaggery that Ellen displayed during her interactions with various yeah, guests on her show over the years only further adding to the cancellation of Ellen and her empire of a brand. And now guys, a whopping four years after she was thrown away like a wallet condom, Ellen is back with a stand-up special of all things. And Grandma is holding no punches on this one when it comes to her quest for self-pity. It opens with the classic comedian in the green room shot as she seemingly reflects on her career. But this moment of reflection quickly turns bitter as poor Ellen is ironically painted as being hurt by the mean headlines. And I knew that we were in for a doozy her face as soon as she walked girl. up the stairs and they showed various headlines from her cancellation era. And that apparently she was accused of going too far and being too gay. Yes, I'm serious. What? Being accused of going too far, too gay. As if that had absolutely anything to do with why people have a problem with her at this point. Okay. And that should have been the moment that we all should have known that she was going to play nobody, the victim but... here. I mean, seriously, you had four years to reflect. 
do this therapy, ayahuasca in a dirt field with Aaron Rodgers and George Bush, and this is what you come up with? And then they directly address the elephant in the room, her cancellation. Breaking news tonight, is the queen of nice really the queen of me? Toxic, phony, hypocrite, liar. I mean, with situations like this, it's almost gotten to the this point so where I truly believe that some people just lack the ability to take any sort of accountability. She even tries to foreshadow her eventual downfall with a quote from one of her older stand-up specials. Years ago, I started ending my show by saying, be kind to one another. Here's the downside. Um, I can never do anything unkind ever now. This toxic workplace angle was the shit that I expected. Now this is when Ellen comes out and a sea of middle-aged white faces just go insane. Yeah. I mean, I'm serious. I paused the video, I loaded it in 4K, <laughs> and I didn't see a drop of melanin in the crowd. Or anyone under the age of 40 for that matter. She starts out with Botox and face filler jokes and parlays that into another joke about parallel parking. I think we all care what people think. We can say we don't. We can pretend we don't care what people think, but all it takes is trying to parallel park in front of a crowded outdoor cafe. <laughs> Spot looks big enough. You line it up the way you always do. You pull in, cut it a little too close. You're scraping the hubcap the entire way along the curb. I'm sorry, but on a personal level, grandma's parking That's lot so adventures funny. just aren't doing it for me. It has the same energy as a boomer trying to step into this century and learn Stop. to use an iPhone. She goes on and on about how she doesn't know how to use the basic functions of her car like her fucking windshield wipers and how embarrassing it apparently is when she cannot turn them off. Like even if we just can't figure out how to turn our windshield wipers off, which to me is one of the most embarrassing things is driving a car when it's not raining and the windshield wipers are going. <laughs> and then you're trying to fiddle with it, trying to turn it off. And you don't the know how to turn it off because it's mind. always different. Sometimes it's on the end of the lever on the steering wheel. Sometimes there's a lever within the lever. Ellen, just stop the bullshit. We know that you have absolutely no shame with your conniving ass. I mean, to be fair, okay. she's always <laughs> been a pretty clean comedian when it comes to her stand-up, and she's kind of cut from that you can same be clean and still funny. Jerry she's Seinfeld, just not funny, which is really not my type of stand-up. Regardless, this whole thing is just not very enticing so far. Don't get me started on the dashboard lights, too. Dashboard lights are not illuminated all the time, so when they are, it must mean something serious, right? But check engine, that's vague. <laughs> I've checked it, it's there. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! I mean, you go away for almost four years and this is what you come up with? With all the crazy shit that has taken place in the world and we gotta hear about your inability to understand cars for 20 minutes? I have never used my parking brake. I've never parked my car and thought, I want it more parked than this. <laughs> Now after this, she does jump does right into the cancellation, like which I really think was the whole purpose of the special and her tour in general. All right, let me see what else I can tell you about that. It's been going on. Oh yeah, I got kicked out of show business. Yeah, yeah, cause I'm mean, yeah. Yeah, you can't be mean and be in show business. No, they'll kick you out. And then she kind of half cries about the fact that when she goes to a restaurant, people are just waiting for her to be a bitch or to do something mean. And how she's beyond sick of this mean queen label. And I will poor, admit some of the dialogue man. here is pretty funny. I do like this little part about her talking with the therapist about the cancellation. At one point my therapist said, Ellen, where do you get this idea that everyone hates you? <laughs> and I said, well, um, New York Times, Washington Post. She then talks you about the ironic send-off phrase that she used to use saying to be kind to one another and that it would have been better if she said Go fuck yourselves. So grandma's really living life on the edge here. I mean, the mask has slipped and she has started to admit her own intolerance for everyday people. And this is when the real deflection starts. Basically, she jokes that harmless pranks and games were the reason behind the toxic workplace allegations. What? She also claims that she never even wanted to be the boss and that she wasn't in charge on the set of her shows, which is a way different tune than what she was singing when That's she did fair. her first show back after the drama. I know that I'm in a position of privilege and power and I realize mm. that with that comes responsibility and I take responsibility for what happens at my show. You're caught. This is the Ellen DeGeneres Relax. Show. I am Ellen DeGeneres. My name is there. My name is there. Exactly. My name is you on underwear. It. I mean, it looked like I was the boss. The show was called Ellen, and everybody was wearing T-shirts that said Ellen, and there were buildings all over the Warner Brothers lot that said Ellen, and 
but I don't think that meant that I should be in charge. I mean, talk about a lazy-ass cop-out when people have gone on record to say that she was the main culprit in creating this environment where bully behavior ran charge, rampant. She also tries she to make this. the point that she got canceled because she is a woman. Most oh, women aren't raised with confidence. We, we just aren't, and we're too self-conscious, which is why you rarely see a woman playing air guitar. <laughs> Look, Ellen, you didn't get canceled for being a woman. You got canceled for being a fraud. The physical comedy in general here is pretty bad, but hey, she is like 70 years old. She continues here to hammer keep down keep the point that she got age. canceled How because she was she? too far against the grain. Eventually they're gonna kick me out a third time for being old, mean, old, and gay, the triple crown. Honestly, I would argue that she's become so famous because she was unapologetically gay at a time when it was not very common or accepted. And yes, at that time, she did take a huge chance and faced a lot she of backlash same, for doing so, me. but it obviously Definitely. made her a pioneer in the that. entertainment space and really a gay icon forever. She then makes this weird illusion um, that she might be kind of autistic. Works. Someone did suggest that I get tested to see if I'm on the spectrum. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> We all are. It's a spectrum. And then she claims that she has OCD and she even says that she has ADD. I don't know. This whole special isn't actually the worst thing I've seen in recent times. You the whole thing? That award goes to Joe Rogan's recent steaming pile of shit that he put out last month. But much like Joe, I think the main problem here is that it has been such a long time since Ellen has lived any sort of normal life, meaning most of the stuff that she says is just not very relatable to the average person. And her whole dialogue around her cancellation is really just a lot of deflection, and it's not even clever deflection at that. And this speech right here at the end just made me cringe on a whole nother level. I'm happy not being a boss or a brand or a billboard, just a person, just a multifaceted person with different feelings and emotions, and I can be happy and sad and compassionate or frustrated. I have OCD and ADD. I'm honest, I'm generous, I'm sensitive and thoughtful, but I'm tough and I'm impatient and I'm demanding, I'm direct. I'm a strong woman. <laughs> This is a comedy Brandy, show? I'm just like you card is uh, downright hilarious. Keep in mind, this is coming from a woman who allegedly demanded lower levels of her staff on her show what not even it? make eye contact with her and frequently treated the people she worked with like fucking peasants. I mean, to me, Ellen's always been on some weird Illuminati shit and something tells me that she spends a lot of time with P. Diddy, if you know what I'm saying. Happy birthday, P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Sean Combs, or as I call him, Cuddle Mix Snuggle Stuff. You don't need to know why. This group of kids had a dream to dance with Diddy. Today, that dream came true. No matter what name you go by, you are always one of my favorite people to have on the show, Diddy. Thanks to my friend Diddy, you're always the life of the party. Mm. Apparently, I have a history of not knowing which parties I've been invited to, at Diddy. Either way, they just give her a standing ovation while she watches on in all her glory. I mean, seriously, it lasts like a fucking minute. You know, it's almost like watching a kid get a participation trophy. Like, yes, we all know you actually sucked. She closes the show out by basically saying all of those people who thought that she was mean we're basing it off of lies and that only she knows the truth in her heart and that she hopes that in the end people will remember her as someone who was loved by the masses and this is where the show really wraps up they do like 10 different rounds of applause for her in the last five minutes and overall she just kind of paints herself as some sort of martyr which is just hilarious overall the special was fine it was just really boring and i thought that her playing the ignorant what? victim card was just a massive pop out was this the worst stand-up special i've ever it seen seems like absolutely it. not i mean i've watched the gringo poppy Why? i just didn't really find this funny at all but it wasn't exactly like unbearable and at the end of the day ellen's legacy will be that she was a pillar in the gay community who in my opinion overstayed her welcome and bit off more than she can chew but i want to know what you guys think oh my god this was hard to get through <laughs> He's talking about this ain't the worst stand-up he's ever seen. It's the worst stand-up I've ever seen wrapped up in the video. And if this recap is, is bad, I can only imagine what the entire special is like. And you sat there and watched the whole thing. That's crazy. And he's saying like, oh, I didn't think it was unbearable. I just thought it wasn't funny. That would make a comedy special unbearable for me. <laughs> I'm turning it off. If I'm not laughing within like the first, I don't know, 15 minutes, and that's being generous, I'm turning it off. The hell? Um, but I mean, her comedy is for somebody, apparently, you know, people think she's funny, I guess. Humor is very subjective, so some people are eating it up, I guess. But yeah, she does definitely seem like she's playing the victim, which is not the correct angle to take whatsoever. But I guess we'll, we'll see if people accept her back. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know what other videos I'm going to watch, and I'll see y'all the next time. Bye!